Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got three great stories, and it's all about mass adoption. So first up, Huobi is now the first major crypto exchange running a Chainlink node. And this is on top of what Binance is doing already. Also, Cardano developer IOHK kicks off Shelly Virtual Summit by unveiling huge plans for the Cardano ecosystem and one that I was totally blown away by. And last up, institutions are coming in droves. New York-based asset manager secures $190 million for Bitcoin fund. And this is just one more example of institutions FOMOing in. But before we get to that, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today, it is July 3rd, 2020. It looks like it's about uh, 1230 Texas time. So Bitcoin is just barely hanging on to the 9,000 position. I think it actually went down a little bit uh, below that, but right now this is what it's showing. So 9,000 with a gain of a fantastic 0.1%. Ethereum holding strong 226, Tether's Tether, XRP's XRP, and Bitcoin Cash and Cardano. Wow, look at that. Cardano in the sweet number sixth place. Uh, up 7.7%. I can only assume why that is. And everything is pretty much the same. EOS up a little bit, so great for them. Fantastic. Let's just jump right in. So, you know, when I see articles like this, this gets me excited. And why does it get me excited? Because I am biased. I own Chainlink. I also own a bunch of other things that we're going to talk about today. So if you wonder like, hmm, what do I digital asset news is actually talking about all this stuff? It's because I own it. And just to make things clear, this is exactly what I own. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, EOS, Chainlink, Tezos, and Stellar. So if I talk about these projects a lot, it's because I own them. I try not to be as biased as possible, but it just kind of sneaks in. So that's just me being transparent, but let's get into it. So major cryptocurrency exchange Huobi has announced it is becoming the first major trading platform to start running a Chainlink node and integrate its price data in Chainlink's ecosystem. Huobi will use Chainlink's external adapters to make the Huobi Exchange API available to smart contracts, which will allow developers to access the exchange's price data. The first supported pairs will be Bitcoin coin to ethereum usdt usdt uh, eth eth usdt so fantastic news looks like uh, chain link is going to be available uh, all the way throughout for multiple pairs so this is good now if you don't if you're not familiar with um, chain link what it allows it to do is to pull real world data uh, by using an API and pull everything into a blockchain such as on Ethereum and other blockchains because blockchains, uh, the problem is, is that they can't pull outside data into the actual blockchain. They need what's called an Oracle and Chainlink does that very well. Now, I know there's people out there that are saying, hey, there are many more oracles out there and we can use all these different ones. And yeah, that's true. There are or other oracles out there. But right now, Chainlink is the one that everybody is choosing and you got to go with something. So um, I like that opportunity. Anyhow, moving on. While Binance was the first major crypto exchange to provide their data on Chainlink oracles, Huobi will be running its own node on the cryptocurrencies blockchain, the Huobi wallet. The node will let it sign its own price data, allow users to be able to verify that it is actually authentic. And Will Wang, Huobi wallet CEO, said, the DeFi space offers a unique value proposition of providing financial products that are transparent, open and programmable. He also states, we are very excited to accelerate our involvement in this emerging trend by providing Chainlink users access to Huobi global exchange data, as well as running our own Chainlink node. And I got to tell you, this is why I've always been talking about in this channel, which is Ethereum is really a $10,000 coin. And Chainlink right now is around $470, maybe hit $5. I don't know how much it is right now. Um, but it's about between a 50 and 150 dollar coin uh, i'm just gonna i'll just round it off i'll say it's a hundred dollar coin it's going to be everywhere it's going to be used with api it's going to pull every all the data into all these different blockchains that can't do it by themselves and i think it's going to be huge and um the ace in the hole i think is DeFi, and it's what's really going to um you know expand this whole space that's just my theory um but um i i see it actually happening and me personally as a small business owner um i gotta tell you to get a loan from a bank is the hugest pain in the A that you could ever go through. I mean, getting a house is one thing, uh, to go through a bank and get your mortgage and all that stuff. But to go there and get a small business loan, it's a nightmare. And uh, they never really want to loan you money when you actually need it. It's when you don't need it. And I'm and now all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know, we can give you all these loans. I'm like, where were you six months to a year ago when I actually could have used you guys? So with DeFi, if you can put different things up and just get it without the loopholes, I mean, 
I'm telling you right now, DeFi is something for retail investors, great for individuals, but when small businesses really figure it out, it's going to explode and that's just how it's going to be. Moving on, Huobi Wallet already secures a total of 10 million in crypto assets for projects like Atom, Ontology, and Loom. Chainlink, the post ads, has established itself as a market leader when it comes to oracles, which are quickly becoming one of the most important pieces of infrastructure in moving the blockchain space beyond tokens. It provides smart contracts with universal access to real world data, off chain events, and traditional payment infrastructure. Huobi also pointed out that Chainlink is the most used oracle in the decentralized finance ecosystem and is integrated on various other blockchains including tezos polkadot and cosmos it also works with google oracle and even that slow as heck one swift i mean thankfully they're working with swift because boy if anybody needs it is swift i gotta tell you that to uh to transfer money to one of my manufacturers for my amazon business has been a nightmare lately um i had a pretty sizable income for a pretty large order that that uh, had just come up and this was last week and i put it i put in my transfer my wire transfer on friday so one week ago they the bank dragged its feet to get it and they said oh you know we'll do it as soon as we can so i had to wait friday and you know the bankers aren't going to work on the weekend so saturday sunday that didn't happen then on monday around three or four o'clock the manufacturer uh, sent me an email and said hey we got it we'll ship out these units and it was like twenty thousand units to amazon so essentially what happened was i lost four days I lost four days of revenue uh, because the banks suck. So when I see stories like this, oh, I am all on board. I mean, I cannot wait till till things actually speed up to where they're supposed to be. I mean, if I can send a, uh, an, an email to any one of you that, that is watching this video, you, I don't know where you are at, if you're in the UK or Australia or India or Canada, or whatever else, I can send you an email and you will get it in seconds. But to send money, which is all digitalized anyhow, I can't do that, even though that I pay these banks the things to do. It is one of those frustrating things, and uh, I'll just leave it as that. Let's move on. Next up, Cardano developer IOHK kicks off Shelly Virtual Summit. And uh, this is actually was one of those stories that people were actually asking me about. And I was like, I had you know heard about it slightly. Let's see what's going on. So what's going on is that during the Shelly Virtual Summit, which started yesterday, that was in uh, July 2nd, IOHK confirmed the successful deployment of the Shelly code to the main net on June 30th. And I got to tell you, Charles Hoskinson came out and said, <clears throat> we want to do this. We want to deploy uh, the Shelly code to the mainnet by June 30th. However, we're going to leave it all the way to July 7th, just in case there's any kind of hiccups. And it actually happened, which was you know pretty amazing. So I'm optimistically hopeful. Anyhow, from July 7th, Cardano holders will be able to participate in staking as well as transfer the coins to wallets that support the upgrade. So from July 7th, I believe all the way to the end of the month, that is when this is going to happen. Now, correct me in the comments section, but I will definitely be doing a video on how to transfer your coins to the wallet that is going to support this Shelly mainnet. Because for me as a holder, this is huge news. Moving on, IOHK also announced the launch of a decentralized identity system. Let me read that again. IOHK announced the launch of a decentralized identity system called Atala Prism. With this, Millions of unbanked people will have access to social and financial services, including DeFi. And I read that and I thought to myself, that's the missing piece. Uh, this is, if this actually happens, it really is game over. Because you have to understand that uh, wherever you're at in the world, if you don't have any kind of banking system that you are the unbanked it makes it uh, extremely difficult for you to to either grow your business or just to actually you know have funds and support you and your family think about it if you have to carry your cash everywhere you go i mean you're opening yourself up for high risks crime uh, different aspects like that and then also how do you take out loans for your business or when things are shortchanged because everything is just on you because you are unbanked it makes it extremely difficult so all these different programs that they have where they're like oh well you can you know put your money in here uh, you can do this you can also uh, and then I, my, my question always was well how do you how do you get the fiat how do you get the actual paper uh, that you have wherever you're at into um, your what, whatever it is like an uphold wallet or Abra or whatever so you know if, if you're there and you're in one of those unbanked 
situations you can go to any kind of like a convenience store or a local shop or something like that that has like a kiosk insert your or some type of um, middleman who will take your money and they'll give you some kind of debit card then you use that debit card and most people in the world these days have a smartphone not everybody obviously but uh, that's a they have there's many more people with a smartphone than there are our actual bank accounts and you take that card and then you punch in the number and then boom you have your um, you are essentially banked into this digital world so the problem though is that if you have to do like any kind of like KYC and AML stuff as time goes on then you're gonna need to know some kind of like identity system and I think this is the big thing but it's not only that I see it like this if you can have a decentralized identity system and it is a trustless system that has the ability to in some way shape or form verify your identity uh, this could be huge for things like voting record keeping documents deeds of trust I mean I mean the list just goes on and on so when I heard about this I'm like wow that is pretty amazing so I mean we'll see it's very ambitious I don't know how it's all gonna work but uh, hey they're working on it and we'll see what happens so uh, on we go IOHK is also developing project catalyst which is a decentralized Treasury fund for uh, Cardano holders basically it would allow the, the Cardano community to participate more by deciding on the allocation of funds to suitable projects and voting on important decisions in the network Project Catalyst will be rolled out in the fourth quarter of this year, and uh, Cardano is currently valued at uh, 10 cents at the time of publication, up uh, about 10%, which we just saw in the last 24 hours. So here's the thing: we haven't had a lot to be excited about as far as Cardano, and I got to tell you, when I, I mean, I bought it back in 2017, and I just saw it just tumble and tumble and tumble. But these are good days; these are optimistic days, and. Hopefully it all works out and hopefully things can actually keep on building. But, uh, you know, who knows? It is cryptocurrency digital assets, so we will see. But as time goes on and they start to talk about um, staking and transferring coins to the wallet, I will definitely do a video on it, and uh, I'm excited about that. Next up. So last story. This was pretty interesting. New York-based asset manager secures $190 million for a Bitcoin fund. Uh, the New York Digital Investments Group, or N NY Dig has raised 190 million for a Bitcoin fund called the NY Dig Institutional Bitcoin Fund LP, according to a filing with the SEC. Bitcoin fund has 24 unnamed investors. Oh, I'd love to know those names. And was originally registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission in 2018. It originally raised 31 million, and in 2019 it raised 54 million from six other investors. The fund has grown to almost 200 million cents. Notably, NY Dig, Dig made headlines back in May, I guess, after closing a 140 million fund called the Bitcoin Yield Enhancement Fund. Forbes reported it's unclear whether the funds are different. If they are indeed different or the same, then the NY Dig has become one of the largest institutional investors in the crypto space in the U.S., with a total of 330 million investors are invested in Bitcoin across both funds. The NY Dig is a holder of the coveted Bit license. Here's where it gets interesting. And I've always talked about this in the channel. It's not about uh, what you know; it is who you know. So listen to this: they are they are the holder of the coveted Bit license from the New York State Department of Financial Services (NYDFS), which makes it a regulated entity in the state. The former financial regulator who created the Bit license in 2015, Benjamin Losky, joined the fund manager last year, 11 months before it received the license. So. How big of an asset is that guy for that company? They must have paid him a premium to get him over there because you know how many people actually apply for it and actually get accepted? <laughs> Not too many. So, uh, of course, Benjamin Lasky, it's all about, you know, or companies themselves, it's all about who you know not what you know even if the new uh, fund is rebrand ny dig is a new major institutional player in the crypto space institutional investing in the space has so far been dominated by grayscale investments which has over now four billion worth of assets under management so um, this is always big news when we see institutional investors and i think that the more that come in first of all it's a double-edged sword the more they come in, the better it is for the space because the more that they can kind of pull things in. They're like a black hole. They kind of just suck everything in. And especially when you get financial analysts or financial planners kind of uh, sucked in the same way and they start to uh, tell their clients like, hey, we should do this and allocate 1% or 3%. And then before you know it, it's just like this big, huge parabolic bull run like in 2017. In 2017, we thought these institutional investors were actually going to be here and they weren't really here. 
and now you can see it all over the place so i'm going to definitely be adding these to like people like fidelity digital assets with their seven trillion assets under management and on top of fidelity being just the institutional investors they've also been tasked with being a custodian for a new bitcoin trust and this is the one through the um Wilshire Phoenix Bitcoin Trust. So they're doing uh, double duty. So they have custodial services and then they have asset center management as far as digital assets. And then BACT is already in there. BACT and Galaxy Digital, they're going to offer custodial services on top of Nomura and uh, being with uh, Komenu. And that's on top of all the other institutions that are here, like TD Ameritrade with their one trillion asset center management. You've got the big guys, Grayscale, they just talked about. And this was, uh, remember, this is quarter one, 2020 when they had a paltry 2.2 billion now they have what four billion it said so not too bad on top of and this is more like a um not a popularity contest but something along those lines because uh paul tudor jones he was like an investment legend from like the 80s and early 90s and uh his group which has you know 21 billion assets under management uh he just came out on may and said hey i'm gonna put two percent of the total investments into bitcoin futures so um, all these different people that are in the traditional market are like, hey, if Paul Tudor Jones, the legend, is doing this, we should get into it. And I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing all these different things happen. So uh, I'm excited. Three great stories today. Thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see some more mass adoption. Now, before we take off, if you got a couple minutes, I'd like you to stick with me for Scam of the Day. So I actually posted this yesterday late at night this actually came up on my feed and it looked to me it looked just like i mean this is what joe rogan's podcast looks like exactly like this experience number 1502 finance and blockchain 69,000 watching 69,000 watching and there was a nice little giveaway of uh 5, bitcoin so you're looking at this i'm like all this appears on my feed normally except for this part giveaway 5,000 bitcoin now i know what that is you know what that is but the uninitiated has no idea what that is. So when I saw that, I immediately posted it and I said, hey, there's another scam. Uh, this is my feed and this trash pops up. Please downvote it and report. And all of you, or a large majority of you did it and uh, they took it down. So, but I don't know if YouTube took it down because it says this video isn't publicly available. So whoever is doing that, usually if YouTube removes it, it says this has been removed by YouTube, you know, guidelines, whatever else. But these people made it, they, they took it from uh, public to private because they knew it was going to get taken down. So, hey, that was that's a, that's a step. I don't see why YouTube doesn't have the ability to uh, take it out, but whatever. So that inspires me i like to see that so if you got a couple minutes uh let's do one more so this is the scam of the day in the description of every one of my videos there's going to be a link at the in the description it's going to say scam of the day and you click on that and it's going to take you these are all the ones that we've gotten rid of so far so not too shabby but we got a couple more that we need to get rid of this is the newest one which is the dumbest one but sure it's kylie jenner interview which amazingly has over 1700 views and uh this if you watch the whole thing uh i have not yet but uh, someone told me that she's not even talking about bitcoin which is not a surprise but however you, you see it right here it says to participate you need to send between 0.1 bitcoin to 20 bitcoin to the address and we'll send it back to you to twice the amount you sent so how do we know this is a scam because you can't just take my word for it right all the stuff i tell you, you shouldn't take just my word for it so first thing we want to take a look at the comments well the comments are turned off so that's a red flag second of all we're going to take a look for what's called an asymmetrical giveaway so if i see something where someone's land hey send me one i'll send you two or send me two and i'll send you 20. that's an asymmetrical giveaway so here's the thing about scams um you are not special nobody will send you free money and that's just the truth i don't care if there even is a legit thing treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise and you'll be a lot happier so what do we do the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dislike it which i've already done and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the three dots and we're going to click report and i'm going to say this is spam again i cannot believe i got to do this two times scams and fraud and next and just say whatever you want like i say this is a scam and just report so that's the big thing and if you're ever curious about like well is this is a scam or not a scam like usually it's going to be like something like elon musk or it's going to be somebody from like cz binance or like um, somebody from coinbase and they're going to say hey give us this bitcoin we'll send you two back whatever else just send them an email 
I mean, you can't send Elon Musk an email, but you can send Tesla an email and say, hey, is somebody giving away, is Elon Musk giving away uh, free Bitcoin? They'll tell you no. Send something to Binance. Hey, you guys giving away free bit? No. You send a coin bit? No. I mean, you can't send it to Kylie Jenner, but I'm just going to tell you right now, it's not a real thing. It's a scam. So if you ever are curious, just go ahead and send somebody an email. Yeah, they'll get back to you within 24 hours usually, and then uh, that's it. So uh, look, I appreciate you sticking with me to the to the uh, scam of the day. If you got time, go ahead and do that. I really appreciate it. And also, I want to say thanks to my supporters. So level ones, they pay a couple bucks. Thanks to everybody. Level two, um, they pay a little more, and I give them a shout out. So shout out to All Right Soft, Wen Mullet, myself, who else? Dave Plummer, Grant Sharman, Bruce Wood, Baking Benjamins. Noel Flippin' Vegas, Martin Lewin, Michael Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Canuck, Tessie, Ryusaki, Positive, Troc LLC, JC Durex, Crypto Veritas, John Miller, The Office, El Merg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kells Show, Mage Research, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prospery, XRP Carolina, whatever, AE, and Hero Soap Company. They make soap. So that's it uh, for today. And also, if you get an email from Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail, that's a scammer. My email is Dan Digital Asset News with an S at Gmail. This guy or gal, I don't know who it is, they want you to join some kind of like trading group. I don't do trading, so that's stupid. Uh, but that's it. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate it. Have a great day. See you on the next one. And that's all.